Hi, this is Dave Shopius here. I have built an arm for my B9 robot. It's pretty big. Um, in perspective, it's about the size of a human arm, a human hand, uh, an elbow, and it's about the same length and everything. It weighs about uh, four pounds on the end out here, and the whole thing from here out weighs about 12 pounds. So it's pretty hefty, pretty, pretty, uh, and it's pretty nimble when it keeps gets going. I have like three or four different joints here. Um, I'm having an issue with the elbow motor centering. Um, it is actually doing a pretty good job, pretty close, but it's not consistent on center. And when this thing sucks into the torso of the B9 robot once I have it in place, it's got to come in pretty tight and pretty precise. I only have maybe a half inch to play with up and down. So let me run through this uh, with you. To give you an idea what I what I've built here, how I'm controlling it, what I've used, so maybe I can get some ideas on how to get uh, a little better centering on this. Um, I'm really only worried and concerned right now with the elbow motor. Everything else out here is working really good. It's staying nice and center. Um, I've got it built um, just the way I want to. So let me come around here. Um, let's start with how I'm controlling this and how it works. Basically this is a DC windshield wiper motor. It um, pulls some pretty good amps. Uh, probably about maybe 5 amps when it's really not pulling a lot of load. It can go up almost to oh, geez, 30 amps uh, when it's really under load and really loaded when it's really rocking. So it draws some good amps. Um, I've got really good heavy wire controlling it. Um, good connectors. That's 10 gauge wire going all the way back to the power supply. I'll talk about that power supply in a minute. <clears throat> Basically though it's um, a regular DC motor and I'm using a Spectra Symbol soft pot as a feedback design device. Um, it's a 10K pot and it is, and it sits back in here. I'm going to push this around so we can get a better light. So it sits back in there. So when this arm rocks up and down, it will, there's a stylus that is loaded right in here. You see it. This is what it looks like. It's a little bullet style. And it has a spring loaded tip. So there's always a good firm pressure on it. <clears throat> and I've got it uh, pushed down pretty tight in there. And it's laying on a nice flat surface. So I'm pretty sure that that's nice and flat. It's got a consistent uh, pressure all the way around as it goes up and down. Um, you can see the tail of it sticking out here and I've got um, three wires connected to it. Like like that. Um, the center is the uh, the wiper or the signal and the outside is the pin one and the ground. Um, I have um, a 10k resistor on the two outside legs, the power leg and the ground leg, uh, back on my control um, system. And the reason I do that is because if you push this together right here, it'll burn up. Um, there is an internal resistor inside here someplace <clears throat> that's also 10k, but if this is clamped out here, uh, it will it'll burn a hole right in there. So I've got a 10k resistor on each one of these outside legs. The the center, I guess you'd call it the signal wiper, uh, like a regular pot potentiometer, is uh, just straight back to the um, signal input pin of the um, control mechanism I'm using to control, which is a kangaroo. X2 by Dimension Engineering. So that's how that feed, that works uh, with the motor and the feedback. Um, there is the power plant right there that I'm, I'm feeding it off of. That's uh, like an 80 amp uh, 12240 power plant by Meanwell. 
it uh, should have plenty in fact I know it has plenty of uh, amperage and voltage to run this is 12 volts this is all run off of 12 volts the feedback voltage that goes through the potentiometer from the kangaroo is 5 volts so let's get that straight right now so basically the, the feedback comes from here it goes around and up through through all this snake of wire um, the power systems and everything there's really no other way I, I could separate the signal from the power and that really hasn't been an issue I don't think that's part of the issue but anyway it, it wraps down and around goes up through there and it um, plugs in to one of the two kangaroos I have back here I hope you can see this uh, it comes in right here and you can see these black these black um, heat shrinks under there that's where I have the 10k resistors plugged into the kangaroo um, and that is a uh, 2 times 32 saber tooth motor controller the kangaroo uh, gives it feedback and speed position through the software which I have attached right here coming out of the kangaroo and it goes up and snakes around the side and plugs into a easy robots easy B that gives me my my command controls so that's basically how this whole thing is run um, run through really quick again the kangaroo the um, easy B sends signals through the UART port I'm using the UART port on that through this nice good size uh, servo wire around comes into the back of the the kangaroo the kangaroo is uh, now set up in independent mode which gives me two separate motor controllers and it's attached to a, a saber tooth uh, 32 times 2 motor controller that gives the power direction and speed uh, to my windshield wiper motor through all this tangle of wire here uh, and I get feedback to the kangaroo from my Spectre system soft pot that's got uh, two that's tucked back in here that's uh, has the pressure of the bullet stylus on it and this is all nice and rigid and solid and never flexes that I can tell and it uh, goes back and forth and that that uh, stylus gives it the wiping action up and down which gives it the feedback in millivolts all the way back to the kangaroo so that's it um, I am going to um, come back in a minute and show you guys how this thing works and the issues that I'm having okay uh, I'll be back in a minute okay I'm back now um, I want to add one more thing you saw another kangaroo that I have mounted back in the back over there. I have two twin kangaroos mounted on top of this uh, Meanwell power supply here. Um, so this other kangaroo I have over here is actually controlling my carriage drive and that's being um, controlled by a encoder that I have mounted in the back back there that I'm not going to get into right now but that's working nice. Um, it, it draws this in and out of this rail right here and that's what pulls it in pulls this whole system into the torso and pulls it back out so that's working really nice I have no issues with that it's homed nice um, I will say one more thing about the kangaroo I had a heck of a time getting the auto-tune to complete on this setup um, if I, once I finally got big enough wires and a big enough power plant to, to drive it, I took care of those issues. Um, and I finally got an auto-tune to, auto to complete on the kangaroo. And uh, the problem with that was once I started it up, it was an awful tune. Um, it was jerky. It was it was terrible. Uh, I, I couldn't it couldn't find its its whole its uh, endpoint readings that it had found in the tune so I had to go in and spend about a day to uh, adjust the settings myself so I don't know if that's part of the problem or not 
Um, but now I've got it working pretty smooth by putting my own, playing with all the different um, different settings in there. There's like three different dead bands. There's there's position gains. There's speed gains. Um, reset times and all that jazz, which I don't really understand. But I actually got it working pretty smooth, except for this little bit of a, a, a timing issue when it comes in the center. <clears throat> so, uh, without further ado, what I'm going to show you first is uh, how, the, um, how, it, how it's centered right now. You see right here, I have, I have installed a opto switch right here with an interrupt to try to help, myself, help give me a better centering. Uh, capabilities um, kind of, or even as a backup if I can ever get this thing centered properly uh, if not I'm gonna have to rely on that um, but it's it's an opto switch uh, u-type opto switch with an interrupter the idea is when that interrupter goes through those those two jaws there uh, it, it turns off the switch <clears throat> and sends a signal back to an ADC port up on the easy B up there which in turn powers down this this motor. It works pretty good. Um, but there is a little delay there because of all the, the processing and stuff, so I had to get a little timing down. But it is it's pretty it's a lot closer than what the kangaroo was giving me for center points. So um, the problem is that if I can describe this right, um, if I if I go up with it, if I rotate up with the arm and come down to the center, it'll always come to the same point, up and down, same point. If I go down then and come up, it'll come up past or to a different point. And even though I'm sending the same position command, if that makes any sense. Um, so uh, up and down, or it comes to the same point, or if I go down and up, it comes to the same point. But the center point isn't the same if I come down from the top or come up from the bottom. So the, 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 the offset is always offset a little bit. And let me demonstrate this right now. Um, so remember I have five, vo uh, five volts going into this. Uh, here's my easy robot software that uh, sends the command. And um, I'm going to send it up first. And I've, I've got, I've got the, my top point set at 2900. And that's 29 millivolts. So um, my center point for my robot here, arm is like 2614. That should be right in between those optos where you saw the interrupter. And my down uh, value, the farthest down I can go because of my setup is 2390 millivolts. So I'm going to take it up first. And... Um, There it goes. Okay. So it's up. And it gave me a return of 2901, which is good. Remember I had 2900, and it's up at 2901. Now, when I bring it back down to 2614, this number here should say 2614. <laughs> so um, let me bring it down. Okay, by the naked eye, it looks pretty close. Let's see what it returned. Uh, 2609. That's about 5 millivolts off. And we'll see where the optos are lined up. You can see that's a little bit low. Before it was almost right dead in the middle. Um, right here, it wouldn't seem like a whole big deal, but you get like 24 inches out here, and it's like a whole inch off. So, um, three quarters of an inch off, and that, that, um, that's not good. So, let's see what happens when we bring it, uh, I'll take the arm down. It'll go down to 2390. Okay, there's 2390 and let's see what it returns 2388 that's pretty darn close it's like two two millivolts so remember 
up we were about one millivolt off which is within tolerance I would think um, this is two millivolts off and that's that's pretty good but uh, the top and the bottom axis aren't what I'm concerned about it's the center so let's uh, let's take it up to center from bottom I've, remember I've got it set at 2614 millivolts and there she goes up and let's see where she and uh, there it is it's you can see it's right dead even and you can see that there is a difference and what did she report back it came up to 2622 instead of 2614 it's like seven or eight volt, uh, millivolts that's a that's a big difference there that's where my problem is so again let's take it uh, take it up okay she's up remember it was lined up right along the top there where we're supposed to be inside the interrupters inside the uh, the the U opto switch let's take it down the center and the 2609 that's about a 5 volt difference 5 millivolt difference and you can see right there that is low sending it the same reading from the top and the bottom I sent it to 2614 from both sides and we're about quite a bit off <clears throat> let's take it down okay she's down let's take it up to the center 2614 and bam it's consistent it's right there but it's consistently offset <laughs> if, if, if that makes any sense so it's driving me crazy I don't know what to do um, all things being equal everywhere I've tried setting different settings in the describe describe software for dimension engineering that that uh, controls the saber tooth settings and what I'm gonna do now is uh, shut this off and I'll be back in a minute and I'll have that all set up and I'll show you what that looks like in describe okay because I can control it do a live test through there I'll hook it all up that way and you can see what it looks like okay I'll be back in a minute okay one more thing I do want to show you why it's so one of the reasons why it's so important that I need to get this thing centered up properly every time I suck it in um, I'm gonna pull this carriage in See, it really works nice the kangaroo is working perfect there um, and you see how tight my clearance is in there it's got to go it's, it's got to fit right in there <laughs> and uh, if I let the kangaroo set it up center it up it'll be way down here or way up in here it'll be like an inch off each time one way or the other depending on where I'm coming from so um, let me run it out and that it, that kangaroo really works nice on this one you see the speed wrapping is perfect uh, it's nice and smooth and that's being run by an encoder um, feedback is with the encoder so you can see what the different what the what the deal is there um, I am going to run this thing down once and center it up from the bottom and um, pull it in see the difference there before it was way up on top there when I went from top down it was up here now when I when I went the other way it's it's way tight down here so I have to get a better centering system okay okay I'm back for the third time um, I've got the kangaroo and saber tooth uh, 2 times 32 
hooked up um, to my computer uh, through the COM port, uh, through a serial port um, to my laptop. And just to be clear, I'm using uh, between the Kangaroo and my Control Easy B up here, I'm using really good thick coiled uh, braided um, servo wire. And also going from the uh, feedback soft pot, vector symbol soft pot, to the um, kangaroo itself, I've got um, the same good size braided twisted um, servo cable. So it um, shouldn't uh, be an issue as far as having too small a wire. Uh, hopefully I'm not getting interference. But it looks, everything's consistent, so there's a setting off someplace. So anyway, I'm, I'm going through my COM ports, my serial ports, I guess it's called, um, to my computer. And here's the Descri Describe software that um, Dimension Engineering uses to make settings in the Kangaroo. And you can see I've got, uh, I've got it on COM22 address 128. Um, some of the settings I have set up now is the dead band is like 1%. The X potential is like 65%. Um, I'm using potentiometer one. I have speed ramping set at 600, uh, whatever that is. I don't understand a lot of this stuff. All I know is um, <clears throat> the auto tune put a lot of this stuff in here. I had to change almost every setting to get it to run smoothly. Um, and I was told by Dimension Engineering that that was. Probably because um, of my uh, asymmetrical load of my arm, which means I got that big heavy load out there and the motor's back here and it's trying to work it up and down. So that, I don't know if that's true or not, but I gotta go with it because I don't know any better. <clears throat> um, I got the max minimum speed at zero. I dropped that down a little bit, but it didn't seem to make any any difference. I've played with all these these settings. Um, there's my analog settings. I don't. I think that's just where the um, potentiometer reads center and end to end, and voltage. This RC. I don't know what it does. Uh, I'm not using RC mode. It's in my here's my serial set serial settings. That's how it communicates back and forth. Um, here's the control settings that, that have a lot to do with it, how it's set. Uh, this is my position dead band where it is considered zero. Um, it's at 15 millivolts and here's the speed dead band. There's like three dead bands on this thing. And that's why I've got that set to 13 millivolts slash S. I guess that's speed or seconds. Um, cut power when it stopped, and this is as low as I can get these numbers and, st and still have some kind of control without it rocking and jittering around. Click the advanced, and, that, and it says here don't mess with these because <laughs> it's all done when you do the auto tone tune, but um, nothing was set up where this thing acted right for me. Um, I, I got actually I was able to get two or three successful tunes after a while and none of them let my motor work properly smoothly it was jittery jerky uh, out of control and the only way I could do is come in here and um, set these myself uh, response times minimum power again I got that set at zero I just dropped that down the other day from I think it was like point five or so um, or 0 .0, that's what, 0 .015. And it really didn't make much of a difference where I put that. Um, but I, I, I played with all these. I brought my gains up um, until I got everything working nice. So um, that this was a big area of how it's controlled. Uh, positioning, these are just uh, where my endpoints are set at, the millivolts. I told you before, 2390 and 2900 or my maximum travel points. Um, right now I'm not using any limit switches, but when I did the auto-tune I had limit switches on there. I took them off because I, I they just weren't being used anymore and I needed that wire for something else. Actually I took the I took the wire and used it for that uh, 
auto switch. So I unclick that. Uh, I'm really happy with the the um, runaway and stall uh, settings that this thing does, the precautions. So I figured the limit switches aren't needed. I'm not using them on this carriage going in and out. I, I use the crash point um, auto tune mechanical stop. So anyway, it, it works just as well without it. This is a area. Okay, this is what I want to show you a live test. Um, what we're doing here, it, it, it wants to start, and there's my normal range, yes, and uh, what I'm going to do now is come down here and click the commands, so you can see kind of what, what it's doing here. Right now, this is, it, it's reading back that it's at 2621 position, and you remember that back on the uh, old, um, let's see if I can, the center point. 2622 is where uh, the uh, Easy Robot software told me it was at when I did a get P from the kangaroo. So going back to the um, describe, it's at 2621, which is about right. So and um, that's what happens. Getting some electronic feedback you can hear in the background over to that chopping. That's my claws opening and closing. We'll go all the way to the top. Whoops. So, that's what it looks like. <laughs> um, I don't know if that tells you anything, but um, why does it do that? I don't know. It goes up and then pulls it back down sometimes. It, like it goes past the dead band and then pulls it back down. So, um, usually that doesn't happen. Once in a while it does. Again, I don't know why. I don't know. I wish I could set a, a point in here to go to to see if it goes to every time. But the only uh, control I have is right here. So, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to give you a little bit of a... See what it looks like. That chopping goes away when I have those servos energized. That, that must just be some residual uh, feedback. So anyway, that's uh, that's what it looks like. Um, there's my control. Uh, that's uh, live position test. And I want to thank you for for watching. Okay, hopefully we can come up with something. Thank you. Bye.